Hi, this is Michael Fry, and in this video we're going to look at the tone controls in Lightroom. Now I think getting the tones right is the most important aspect of image processing. If you can get the white point, black point, overall brightness, and overall contrast looking the way you want them to look, then you've really done most of the work. Now Lightroom's tone controls in the basic panel exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks are very powerful, well-designed tools. But in order to take advantage of their power, you have to understand how they work. So that's what we're going to explore in this video. Now the complete video is included in my Landscapes in Lightroom ebook and video package. But in this shorter version, we're going to take a look at the image adaptive behavior in the tone controls. There are some things going on under the hood that aren't immediately obvious, and the most important of those are the automatic highlight recovery and the automatic black point adjustment. Now all of the tone controls in Lightroom are image adaptive. That is, their behavior changes based on the image's content. Now in my Landscapes in Lightroom ebook, I discuss the image adaptive behavior of all of these sliders, but I think the most important ones to understand are the automatic highlight recovery and the automatic black point adjustment. Now I'm going to click on a preset here that's going to set this image back to Adobe's default settings in an earlier process version before Lightroom had those image adaptive behaviors. Now I hit the J key to activate the highlight and shadow clipping alerts and you can see that there are some blown out highlights up here and some black shadows down here. Now I'm going to click on a different preset that's going to set the image to the current process at Adobe's default settings and you can see that there are now no clipped highlights and no clipped shadows. So let me go back to that earlier process, the process version 2 here for a second. As you probably know with RAW files it's possible to recover overexposed highlights as long as they're not too overexposed, too blown out. So in the old process, process versions 1 and 2, you had to use this recovery slider to bring back detail and overexposed highlights, right? So you push this up and you could bring back detail in those blown out areas. And you could use the black slider or perhaps the fill light tool to bring out more shadow detail. Now in the current process, that is ever since Lightroom 4 or process version 3 and up, those things happen automatically. Right? So again I'll go back to this preset which sets this image to Adobe's default settings in the current process. The blown out highlights have been recovered automatically and the black point has been adjusted to give the image more shadow detail. Now let me hit the J key to turn off the highlight clipping and we'll go back to again the old process and if you look at the shadows down here you can see they're a little bit blocked up and then we go to the new process and you can see they're a bit more open. So old process, look at that, and new process. And let's zoom in on some of the highlights here that were blown out and we'll look at the old process and you can see that there are patches here that are just washed out, no detail and then we go back to the new process and you can see that that detail has been recovered and there's some texture up there. Now I think that's great. You know, I typically don't want blown out highlights in my photos. So having those highlights recovered automatically just saves me a step. Better yet, I think recovered highlights look better, more natural in the new process than they did in the old process. And I think the automatic black point adjustment is helpful too. And if I do want to have some pure black in an image, I can always just pull down the black slider. Now there are a couple of reasons why I think it's important to understand what's going on with this automatic highlight recovery and the automatic black point adjustment. First of all, your image might look different when you first import it into Lightroom than it did on the back of your camera, right? So if you photographed a high contrast scene like this and you looked at the blinkies on the back of your camera, you probably would have seen a whole bunch of them up here in the clouds like this. 
but when you take the image into Lightroom, those blown out highlights will have been automatically recovered if possible, if they weren't too overexposed. Second, if the highlights are too overexposed to be recovered, there's probably nothing you can do about it. Now this image is at Adobe's default settings with the current process, and you can see that there are still some overexposed highlights. So Lightroom has already tried to recover detail there, but those highlight areas in the clouds were too blown out to be recovered. And no matter what I do with the sliders, I'm not going to be able to bring back detail to that area. So let me zoom in on this area and I'll turn off the highlight clipping alert there. And if I pull down the highlight slider, I can bring back texture and detail to all these surrounding areas, but this one patch was just too overexposed and there's no detail there. It's just blank. It's kind of grayed out, but there isn't any actual texture there. Same thing if I try the white slider, again, it just sort of grays it out. Or if I try exposure, just makes it more obvious. Now what you could do, and what I did do with this image when I processed it, was to just clone in some detail from other patches of clouds in this one little spot. So, so if you have just a tiny area that's blown out like this, it's probably fixable. But dragging sliders around won't help. Now in the complete video, I cover all six tone control sliders in depth. I also talk about why you might consider changing your default settings. And I also show you how I would go about processing both high contrast and low contrast images using the tone control sliders. The complete video is available with my Landscapes in Lightroom ebook and video package which you can find, of course, on my website, michaelfry.com. So I hope you'll visit there to find out more. But in the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful, and thanks very much for watching.